I was a social worker before I became a politician. So um, uh, my motivation for coming into politics was social work. I felt that uh, there was, there was, if I just stuck to social work, there was so much to do that no amount of social work could make a difference. It's only if you came into government and built a welfare state. That's the only way you can really help the uh, people in your country, the underprivileged people in your country. And hence I came into politics. I was inspired by a prophet, peace be upon him, who set up the first welfare state in the history of mankind. It was a, the state he set up in Medina was based on principles of compassion and justice. And it, the state decided to take the responsibility of the weaker section of the society. So the first time a state took responsibility of orphans, or widows, of the poor people, of handicapped, or, and pensions were introduced first time in that state. So for the old people, and so, uh, as a Muslim, <clears throat> we, are, we are told in, our, uh, in the uh, holy book by the Almighty, the divine book, that we have to follow the example of a prophet, peace be upon him. And hence, my motivation for coming into politics, to build a welfare state in Pakistan. And so this program of Esas, which basically means care and compassion, uh, this program which we, which you see and which I must compliment Sania because she has done really uh, 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 hard work, comprehensive, uh, the way she has gone in fine details to set up these various initiatives under the heading of ESAS. And this, of course, financial inclusion uh, is the core of the ESAS program. Because unfortunately, this trend in the world where the poor get poorer and the rich get richer, the poor countries get poorer and the richer countries get richer, the gap keeps increasing. The statistics I read, I think it was uh, one of the UN uh, bodies which came up with these statistics that about that 60 odd people own as much wealth as about 3 billion people on this earth. So there has to be something wrong with that system, which creates this inequality where people have such money which uh, they will never be able to, if they lived five lifetimes, they would not be able to spend it. And yet on the other side, you have poverty. And I, I also feel that, uh, that this, uh, this uh, greed of, in the universe, where you have the rich wanting to avoid taxes, so have their offshore accounts and these tax havens, and uh, you know would do anything not to be part of, uh, not to pay the dues, so that you can lift uh, people out of poverty, as what China has done. What China has done is remarkable. I mean, they have taken out se uh, almost 700 pe million people out of poverty in 30 years. Never, never done in human history. So um, this idea where the rich want to get richer and this greed, it is the biggest curse of this, of this planet. Uh, the, the, all the problems which, which, are, which the universe, which, which our Earth faces, global warming, this uh, environmental degradation, all of them, the root cause is greed, where there's an, it's never enough. I mean, you can make as much money as you want, but, it, but the, the level of greed is always going to uh, make you want more. And so you have this strange phenomena on this earth where you have people now getting into these boats, risking their lives to get to the land of milk and honey, where people want to get away from poverty. So uh, uh, I feel that, yes, in, in our country, we will be trying our best, not because of votes, because it's my belief that you, it's not a civilized society where you have such poverty, where sections of your society are deprived of their daily needs uh, and, and the rich just want more and more money and don't pay their taxes. Uh, I, so this is a real, what we have, my government 
has decided to that we will be the first government that is going to, to uh, all our policies will be to lift people out of poverty. So whatever we do, our economic policies, our agricultural policy, whatever policies we make, the bottom line will be how does it help the poor people as opposed to the elitist uh, policies we've had in the past where policies are only made for a small elite society. So our education system only is only for a tiny elite class. You have three tier education system. So one is for the small elite class, which has this privileged education. Then you have the government school education, which is for the, for the uh, poorer section. And then right at the bottom, you have these uh, Dini Madrasas, which are religious schools, which cater for the poorest of the poor. So we have a three tier system. So the poor, the bottom two do not get good jobs. So the society only caters for the elite. The hospitals are for the elite. Um, the uh, uh, taxes, poor people, common people pay taxes because most of our taxes come from indirect taxes. The rich hardly pay taxes. So the whole mindset has to change where the whole society as a whole decides that we cannot allow this unfair, unjust system to continue. And the, this SAS program is a beginning. Uh, we, we hope that uh, as it starts kicking in, Sanya uh, uh, has made great efforts to make sure that there's credibility, that there's integrity in the system, that we do not allow uh, the system to be uh, misused as most of our uh, programs are misused. So we've taken great care. Uh, people are, uh, because of our economic uh, situation, we for our restructuring the economy, getting out of an economic crisis, people are suffering. But we decided that we're not going to throw, in, throw away money unless and until we have a credible system of distribution. Um, the two, the most vulnerable section are women from the poor background. And we cannot, as a society, cannot uh, move forward if it does not educate and look after its women. So our top priority is to lift our women out of poverty. And we have a, a, a big range of measures which we hope that we will be able to take them out of poverty. So finally, uh, Your Majesty, thank you for coming. We welcome you here. We hope you will come back and we value uh, the concern you show for our country. Thank you.